It's your open source advocate and I'm back and today I'm going to talk about the add-ons for Home Assistant. So last time if you didn't watch the first part, I suggest you go back and watch it. We got Home Assistant installed. We kind of did the initial setup of the things that it, that it finds automatically and we went as you know through an overview of the user interface. And today I want to talk about add-ons and there's several add there's <laughs> actually there's lots and lots of add-ons for Home Assistant. And these add-ons just add functionality and can make Home Assistant more user-friendly and easier for you to use, but also give you extra capabilities inside of the software. So I've got six or seven add-ons that I want to go through with you today that I think are really important and things that you should start off with, and then you can kind of build on that as you get better and more comfortable with Home Assistant. So we'll get into it right after this. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really truly enjoy it and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like. Just click on that thumbs up. And that way YouTube knows that you like it and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. So we're going to go to configuration and actually we're going to go to supervisor and here you'll see the add-ons that I have installed and I, I recommend you install these if you want to follow me on these tutorials just so that you have them now. Ignore this one. Don't worry about almonds. You're not going to need it. It's just an extra thing that's kind of fun. We might do it later but it's nothing that I'm going to do right now. But I will say, you'll want this check Home Assistant configuration because if you ever do have to edit the configuration file, you're going to want to be able to check it and make sure that it's valid before you do anything else because then you have to restart your Home Assistant to get the configuration to, to take effect and that can completely shut down your Home Assistant where it doesn't come back up. So if you check your file to make sure it's valid before you do that, you can really avoid some headaches. Next, we've got the file editor. You'll want to install that one and I'll kind of show you how these work and how to install them. We've got Node Red, you'll also want to install. Terminal and SSH, which will kind of, I'll show you what you need to do for that. And then finally your Samba Share um, as well for your, for your add-on. So if we go to the add-on store, you can find those things just by clicking here in the search box and typing in File Editor. So you'll see I've already got it, but when you, when you get it like this, you just click it and it's going to come up to a screen kind of like this, except you're going to have the option to install right here. You'll click install and it'll start the installation process and then it'll come up and it will say start instead of stop. But you'll see that you have some other tabs up here. So you want to come through and you want to look at the documentation. Just read it and make sure you understand anything that you might need. If you have to change any little bit of configuration, you can read what that configuration is. The file editor, you shouldn't have to. And then there's configuration if you happen to need the configuration. Uh, in this case, it just comes like this. Just leave it like it is for file editor. But once you're there and once you've got it ready, you can just go through and see this has an update. So it has an update pending. So I'll update it when I update the rest of the system. But right here, we've got, you're going to have start. Just click on start and it's going to install the file editor. Now you've got a few options here. So it says start on boot. Yes, you want that on so that your file editor just comes on when, it, when you start up the, the home assistant. Watchdog just says if this thing crashes, restart it for me. I don't use that on the file editor because I can just come here and start it if I need to use it honestly and it's not that it's not a core thing that that makes something run in Home Assistant it's just a tool that we use. Auto update I could turn this on I don't turn this on on pretty much anything most of the time so I just leave that off and then we can just update it manually and then you have uh, show in the sidebar so you'll see that I do have my my file editor here in the sidebar so you can just tick that box hit start and it's gonna go up and start running and then you can say open the web UI if you want to see it that way. And you can say uninstall if you don't want to use it anymore. And there's a little bit of information about it. But if you just want to see it once you've got it running, just click on file editor. And it's going to come here and it's going to open up. And you'll see that it's kind of blank. And that's because you kind of actually need to click on this folder and go find the file that you actually want to do some editing on. So if we wanted to edit our configuration.yaml, that's right here. We would just click on it. And I don't have a lot in there because I don't really mess with it that much. But there's our configuration.yaml. You can come in here and make edits. <clears throat> you can edit other files in the system. It's really easy to do this. Now this is one method of editing files. So we're going to go back to our supervisor mode. The other one that you see I have is the Samba share. So again, just going to the add-on store, type in Samba, and you'll see Samba share comes up right here. 
So Samba Share is another one that's very easy. It doesn't have a lot of configuration to it. And again, you're just going to come up and you're going to see that it has a start or stop. And in this case, start on boot. And I, I again, don't use Watchdog and I don't use the, uh, the auto updater. Um, Watchdog probably wouldn't hurt to turn on because Samba Share is something that you could use pretty often depending on how much you're updating your configuration files and things. But that's really what you're doing is pushing files over that you're editing on another machine instead of using the file editor. So for documentation, you can, again can check out the Samba Share documentation. But what it really does is creates a Samba Share that you can then access from other machines that can see Samba Shares, and you can mount that and move files back and forth and all that kind of stuff. Um, Configuration-wise, there's a little bit of configuration, and again, I'll blur out my password here. Don't worry about that. Um, but you will come in and put in uh, the username that you want it to use, and the password that you want it to use, and the work group that you want it to have. And then you'll put in um, allowed hosts. So basically you want to put in like your IP address range here. And it's kind of got these already set, but I had to add this one or change it to make it my IP addresses. Um, the rest of these are already kind of set. I don't really mess with them. And then as you move down, there's really nothing else for you to change on that one. So we just say we're done. You can save your changes when you're finished. And then you can go back to info and you can click on start in order to start that application. And then you can kind of go and check. There's logs that you can look at whenever you start it. So you can check the logs and make sure that it's actually up and running. So you can just scroll to the bottom and make sure there's no error messages. And it should be good to go. All right. Now we're going to go back and we're going to look at the uh, store again. So the last couple that you need really are, are going to be Node Red, which is very, again, easy to install. But you just go look up Node Red, click on it. And then you're going to click on the install. It's going to start the installation process. And again, show it in the sidebar if you want to. And then start on boot if you want to. And really Node Red is another method of getting automations going. So we'll go through the automation process for Home Assistant. And then we'll go into the automation process using Node Red instead. So Node Red just can give you some extra flexibility in setting up automations. But it's a graphical user interface that is drag and drop. And once you get used to it, very, very cool and very easy to use. Um, there is some documentation. Uh, there's there's a little bit of configuration, so again, I'll have to hide my my um, my secret. But you put in a credential secret, basically, that you set up for this thing, and then everything else here you don't really need to mess with. And once you're done, you go down and here again, just just leave this alone. There's nothing to to really change. Um, once you're done, you save on each section, and then you come back and you click on start and make sure these are ticked and you should be set and ready to go with node red node red is very easy to set up uh, finally we're going to come back and we're going to install the check home assistant configuration tool um, so again if you want to go to the add-on store just you can either find it right here or you can just type check and when you do this you're going to again going to click on install and see i don't even have it started right now but we're going to go to documentation we're going to go to configuration there's really nothing to configure it's just going to say latest and then we're going to say start. So you'll see this little thing spins and it starts doing a spinning move and we can actually go check the logs while it's starting and there's really nothing being logged right now. We can refresh occasionally to see if there's anything coming up and you can see here that it started so we're going to go to log and you can see a little bit of information being logged out here and everything should be good and we've got our configuration or we've got our check home assistant configuration started and running so we can check our configuration as we go along and make any kind of changes. So it's really that easy to set up some of these add-ons. Now, different add-ons have different requirements. Again, the documentation tab is your friend. So when you're going through wanting to add add-ons, it's important to check the documentation. But it's also useful if you're not sure. Go out there to Home Assistant community. Ask questions on their forums. They, will, they are super great people on there. They will help you as much as they can. Um, just I've been so happy with Home Assistant lately. It's just getting better and better. I wanted to open up some channels for discussion, so I've created this Rocket Chat server, and I've got it mixed up with Jitsi Meet. I've created a few channels already to start up some discussions, but of course, we can always open up more channels. If you'd like to jump in and send me a direct message or just ask a question on one of the channels, I'll be monitoring the system. It'll be up and running. I'm going to leave this up and going so that we can have a place where we can all come together and answer each other's questions and have good discussions and good conversations. It's discuss.opensourceisawesome.com. Again, that's discuss.opensourceisawesome.com. I'll have the links in the show notes and the description. So that's the add-ons that I suggest for Home Assistant. That's how you get it installed. That's how you get it running right out of the gate. And again, if you already have smart devices on your network, it's very likely to find a lot of those things and you can get them set up and start running and getting your dashboard set up pretty fast. If you enjoyed this video, like, 
subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along the journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.